Sometimes it's a really good exercise to give ourselves some limitations. And this week I did just that. I limited um, the materials that I used. I just used gesso and um, a bit of collage paper and um, three colours, I think uh, orange, burnt, se burnt sienna, black and white. I made myself work within a grid format. So the first thing I did was um, make the paper look really interesting, then I chopped it up into squares and arranged it to create a grid, a, a painting or a composition based on a grid. It's an interesting exercise, one that um, hones those um, design skills and um, your eye for selecting compositions. And it's also um, a really good and fast way of creating collage paper. Really interesting and lovely surface effects. So come and have a look. So the first thing I did was um, select some collage paper and roll um, the grid up. So I've got lines on the plain side of one paper and the fancy side of another paper because I don't want to fill the whole thing with pattern. Then I uh, painted some gesso quite loosely over the top of the plain side, the side that I haven't got the lines rolled up on, and then on the pattern side of the other. This is just some acrylic ink that I've splashed on and I'm just moving it about. And that brings out the nice texture of the gesso. Um, and then I'm using a stencil shape and I'm just getting some hard edges and some thick paint on there. And uh, once that's on and it's kind of uh, almost dry, I'm just spreading it around a little bit just to um, move that colour through. Now I'm using a darker brown and I'm using a different stencil shape and um, just getting some nice hard edges, some soft edges and just building up that surface. Just following through the same sort of process on the white paint, on the light uh, sheet and uh, just putting paint on then adding a bit of water and moving it about. I want to keep this sheet quite light because the other one's got quite dark so I want to have that contrast. So I'm keeping my colours quite light and I'm moving uh, the paint around. Okay, so um, I still want to keep this lighter, so I'm just adding some more white gesso and I'm moving that around with the colour shaper so that you can still, still see through it in parts. And in this one I wanted to add something different, so I'm coming in with uh, the same uh, sort of colour, slightly lighter, but I'm adding in some lines. And these are quite sort of carefully painted lines and they're straight uh, with curves and they um, just add another difference. And on this one I'm just adding a little bit of line and some dark marks with a, a homemade brush made with string and uh, just keeping it light and just really wanting to just build up different marks onto the surface here. Uh, I think I added some water and trying to get some drips going here as well. There we go, that's more drippy. When that was all dry, I then, following the lines I'd drawn on the back of these sheets, cut these this grid up so that I've now got just a series of squares. And each one is different, and but they have a lot of the same content within them. Now what I wanted to do is just add some stronger contrasts into some of them. So I've got another stencil shape out and I'm just coming in on the edge of some of the shape of some of the squares, making some of the edges a little bit lighter with the white paint and making some of them have a sort of a darker edge with dark paint, black mostly, and also some flat orange color as well. Okay, having done that and it's all dry, I'm now going to uh, select squares and bring them together to create little compositions like this one. And so along that edge where they meet, I'm looking for parts that will carry over and show a sort of a flow through from one square to the other and other parts that show a division. And it's really now just a matter of uh, working with what I've got and making 
uh, finding the compositions that will work well together. Um, and it's sort of a lot of fiddling around with bits of paper and uh, seeing where the edges work and where they don't and where there's a sort of a line of continuity and where there's something that matches and just uh, when you find it you'll see it and then stick it down and there is your composition. And it's, This is quite a fun exercise and certainly you're playing with lots of options until you find what it is that you're looking for. So what I was looking for were um, putting together squares where when you butt up the edges of the squares there's a flow from one to the other but there's also a disruption. So the getting that combination um, is a really interesting exercise.